Namo Amida Butsu. Time. Verses in honor of Master Shinran Shonen by Ganson John Welsh. Time remorselessly robs us of our energy, resilience, strength, and youthful vitality. Time reduces all our great dreams, plans, hopes, ideals, and schemes to ashes and dust, and we must all eventually realize the truth contained in the words of the wise, that death awaits us all, and without exception, we will certainly fall into lower realms due to our evil karma. Our hearts and minds are closed to true Amida Dharma. In this age of Dharma decline that we must endure, this is our inescapable future for sure, from which we can only be free by entrusting our karmic destiny utterly, completely, entirely and now to the wise and compassionate primal vow of Amida and his inconceivably great grace, benevolence and gift of Shinjin. So, let us immediately begin to think and say the Nembutsu with a heart full of gratitude to Amida Buddha who has delivered us from our negative karma and endless rebirth and suffering in samsara. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Thank you, Amida Buddha. Homage to Amida Buddha. I take refuge in Amida Buddha. The above verses were inspired by the following passages from Master Shinran Shonen's Passages on the Pure Land Way. Passages on the Pure Land Way. Preface. The radiant light, unhindered and inconceivable, eradicates suffering and brings realization of joy. The excellent name, perfectly embodying all practices, eliminates obstacles and dispels doubt. This is the teaching and practice for our latter age. Devote yourself solely to it. It is I and limb in this defiled world. Do not fail to endeavor in it. Accepting and living the supreme universal vow, then... Abandon the defiled and aspire for the pure, reverently embracing the Tathagata's teaching, respond in gratitude to his benevolence, and be thankful for his compassion. Here I, Gotoku, of outlying islands, relying on the treatises from India and the western regions, and looking to the explanations of the teachers of China and Japan, reverently entrust myself to the teaching, practice, and realization that are the true essence of the Pure Land Way, and knowing keenly that the Buddha's benevolence is difficult to fathom, I seek to clarify it through this collection of passages on the Pure Land Way. Teaching. To begin, the teaching of the Pure Land Way is found in the largest sutra of immeasurable life. The central purport of this sutra is that Amida, by establishing the incomparable vows, has opened wide the Dharma storehouse, and full of compassion for small foolish beings, selects and bestows the treasures of virtues. It reveals that Shakyamuni appeared in this world and expanded the teachings of the way to enlightenment, and seeking to save the multitudes of living beings by blessing them with a benefit that is true and real. Assuredly, this sutra is the true teaching for which the Tathagata appeared in the world. It is the wondrous scripture, rare and most excellent, it is the conclusive and ultimate exposition of the one vehicle. It is the right teaching, praised by all the Buddhas throughout the ten quarters. To teach Tathagata's primal vow is the true intent of this sutra. The name of the Buddha is its essence. Practice The practice of the Pure Land Way is the great practice that embodies Amida's pure benefiting of others. It is revealed in the vow that all the Buddhas praise the name also known as the vow that all the Buddhas say the name. It may, be fur it may further be called the vow of the right act, which is Amida's directing of virtue for our going forth. Amida's directing of virtue to beings through the power of the primal vow has two aspects, the aspect for our going forth to the pure land and the aspect for our return to this world. Regarding the aspect for going forth, there is great practice. There is pure shinjin. The great practice is to say the name of the Tathagata of unhindered light. 
This practice, comprehensively encompassing all practices, is perfect and most rapid in bringing them to fulfillness. For this reason, it is called great practice. Saying the name, then, breaks through all the ignorance of sentient beings and readily brings all their aspirations to fulfillment. Saying the name is in itself mindfulness. Mindfulness is Nembutsu. Nembutsu is Namo Amida Hutsu. The passage declaring the fulfillment of the vows in the larger sutra states, The Buddha Tathagatas throughout the ten quarters, countless as the sands of the Ganges, are one in praising the majestic power and the virtues inconceivably profound of the Buddha of immeasurable life. All sentient beings, as they hear the name, realize even one thought moment of shinjin and joy, which is directed to them from Amida's sincere mind, and aspiring to be born in that land, they then attain birth and dwell in the stage of non-retrogression. Further, the sutra states, the Buddha said to Maitreya, if there is a person who, having heard the name of that Buddha, leaps and dances with joy, and say it even once, know that they receive the great benefit, that is, they acquire the unexcelled virtues. Bodhisattva Nagarjuna states in the commentary on the ten Bodhisattva stages, if a person desires quickly to attain the stage of non-retrogression, he or she should, with a reverent heart, say the name, holding steadfast to it. When persons doubt as they plant roots of good, the lotus in which they gain birth will not open. But for those whose shinjin is pure, the flower opens, and immediately they see the Buddha. Bodhisattva Vasubandhu states in the treatise on the Pure Land, O world-honoured one, with the mind that is single, I take refuge in the Tathagata of unhindered light, filling the ten quarters, and aspire to be born in the land of happiness, relying on the sutras in which the manifestation of true and real virtues is taught. I compose a gatha of aspiration, a condensation, that accords with the Buddha's teaching. Contemplating the power of the Buddha's primal vow, I see that no one who encounters it passes by in vain. It quickly brings to, full, to fullness and perfection the great treasure ocean of virtues. When these passages from the sacred words of the Buddha and from the treatises, we know in particular that the great practices is not a foolish being's practice of directing his or her own merit towards attainment of birth. It is the fulfilled practice that Amida directs to beings out of great compassion and therefore is called non-directing virtue on the part of beings. This practice indeed embodies the primal vow in which the Nembutsu is selected and adopted. It is the supreme, all-surpassing universal vow. It is the true and wondrous right Dharma that is the one vehicle. It is the unexcelled practice that perfectly embodies all good acts. The word naishi, even, in the passages from the larger sutra, is used to indicate an upper or lower limit while omitting what is between. In the second passage, ichinin, saying of the name once, indicates single-heartedly practicing the nembutsu. Single-heartedly practicing the nembutsu is a single voicing. A single voicing is saying the name. Saying the name is constant mindfulness. Constant mindfulness is right-mindedness. Right-mindedness is the true act that brings about birth in the pure land. Further, Naishi Ichinin in no way refers to one thought and contemplation on the Buddha's virtue or to one utterance and repeated recitation of the name. As the first passage shows, Naishi Ichinin, even one thought moment, refers to the ultimate brevity and expansion of the length of time in which one attains the mind and practice, that is, Shinjin and Nembutsu, the result that result in birth in the pure land. Let this be known. Shinjin. Pure Shinjin is Shinjin that actualizes Amida's profound and vast benefiting of others. It arises from the vow of birth through the Nembutsu, also known as the vow of sincere mind and entrusting. It may further be called the vow of Shinjin, which is Amida's directing of virtue for our going forth. However, for the shallowest of foolish beings, we multitudes of the basest level, it is impossible to realize pure Shinjin, impossible to attain the highest end. This is because we do not depend on Amida's directing of virtue for our going forth, and because 
we are entangled in a net of doubt. It is through the Tathagata's supportive power and through the vast power of great compassion and all-embracing wisdom that a person realizes pure, true and real Shinjin. Therefore, that mind will not be inverted. That mind will not be vain or false. Truly, we know that the supreme perfect fruit of enlightenment is not difficult to attain. It is pure Shinjin, true and real. That is indeed difficult to realize. When persons realize pure Shinjin that is true and real, they realize the mind of great joy. Concerning the attainment of the mind of great joy, the larger sutra states, the person who aspires with a sincere mind to be born in the land of happiness shall reach the full illumination of wisdom and acquire virtues unexcelled. Further, the sutra states, such a person is one of great majestic virtue. Moreover, he or she is a person of vast and unexcelled understanding. This Shinjin is indeed the superlative means of sweeping away doubt and attaining virtues. It is what is truly manifested in the Sutra, all virtues being fulfilled instantly in it. It is the wondrous way of attaining longevity and deathlessness. It is the pure Shinjin of vast majestic virtue. Hence, whether with regard to practice or to Shinjin, there is nothing whatever that has not been fulfilled through Amida Tathagata's directing of virtue to beings out of the pure vow mind. It is not that there is no cause or that there is some other cause. Let this be known. Namo Amida Butsu.